All right, so uh, we went through the we went through the uh, operator overloading kind of introduction last week on online. I thank you. much for uh, posting it on the screen for me. Okay. <laughs> oh, who? Oh, and you? Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Whoever did it, thank you. Uh, so uh, it was actually one of the, the quickest setups we've ever, I've ever done. Usually that doesn't happen that easily. Anyways, so um, yeah, so we started talking about operator overloading. First, we actually introduced, like we analyzed what operators are by saying like, um, an operator is binary, it can ha if it's binary, it has two operands, essentially two arguments. And we said by nature, in an object-oriented language, when you have a binary operator that uh, accepts two operands, left operand is the owner of the, of the operator, and the right operand is the argument passed to it. And we put the uh, example for the signature, and we said, for example, if we, if, if we have something like A is equal to B plus C, then plus equal operator belongs to B, and C is passed to it and re returns what it's supposed to return. We said we are not focusing on that e assignment. That's just to see what it returns, okay? Assignment by itself is a separate thing that we can um, overload, and we did. So we said essentially you can call an operator overload using its function name, like a regular function, or you can call the operator using the operator signature and syntax. They are both identical, same thing, absolutely no difference. Uh, and, at the, and then we talked about uh, uh, the different types of binary operators. We said they have op binary operators that don't have side effect, which means they don't essentially affect the, la the owner, like B plus C. And we have ones that, that they do actually uh, affect most like the, le the left side. Again, these are operator overloads. Let's understand what does it mean to overload it. Like, don't understand. Remember what overload means. Overload means you already have it. You are changing its meaning. It means I cannot create, I cannot overload the at sign operator. Why? Because at sign is not an operator. It doesn't exist. I cannot overload something that doesn't exist. It must exist already. It can change its meaning, okay? And so while plus equal has side effect that over here affects B and not C, when I overload this, I can make plus equal do division for me. It's not. You shouldn't do that. You should do normal things. If somebody does plus equal, if division happens, if that's cuckoo. Let's not do that. We have the power, but let's make sense when we are actually doing something. And, uh, and we said that the thingy doesn't have, side, uh, doesn't have side effect, and this one does. And the signatures for all of them are, are known, so we, we know exactly how to create the signature. Uh, did we talk about? Yeah, and then we talked about unary operators. We said unary operators, uh, because they have only one operand, although it's coming after, because Unary operators by nature are prefix. That uh, uh, operand is the owner. So if I'm doing uh, minus b, operator minus belongs to b. If I'm doing not, operator not belongs to b. If I'm doing plus plus, operator plus plus belongs to b. Are we okay with this? All right. Then we said that if I want to do a postfix operator, overload, I'll be in trouble. Because it's one thing and has one operand, again, it becomes its member. Therefore, D plus plus also has the signature of D dot operator plus plus. If that's the case, then how do I distinguish which one is postfix, which one is prefix? They sat over there and thought and thought, and they couldn't find any sane solution, so they said, say, the heck with it. When we are overloading the postfix, we're going to stick an integer over there. That doesn't mean anything. It just means this is postfix. So that integer that you see as argument, there is no argument to be passed. 
it's just there to indicate this one is a postfix operator overload. If you deal with old C++, very old C++ compilers ever, be careful because if you don't overload the postfix operator and you do the prefix, anyways, one works for both. At, I remember like a long time ago when, when I when I did operator plus plus, and I did B plus plus, because the other one was not uh, created, it actually called it. So if it's a very old, old one, it, it didn't recognize properly. Of course, if you did both, it could recognize. But if you didn't, anyways, both prefix and postfix work. So if you have an old, old compiler, and you see that you did not overload, but still calling the other one, be aware of it. That's that. Then we talked about how to write a proper print and read methods. We said every print and, met print and read method you are writing, it's always proper in your print to return the O stream and receive the O stream as, a, uh, as a, uh, an argument, initializing it to C out. So imagine like this. You'll find out in future why is it good that we do that, but you always want the out the O stream object to flow through your print object, come in and go out and do its business. When you are reading, you want the I stream object to flow through reading procedure, come in to read and go out from read. You'll see later on why this is good and why we need to do, do that. Then um, we reached the point that we said, OK, now we are doing all these operators. What happens if I want to have something like this? Like I want, instead of print, I want actually my class to get printed using C out. Then at left side, I have C out. At right side, I have C type, right? I don't have access to the class O stream. I cannot go fiddle with O stream. If that's the case, we need help. And that's what they literally call these functions, helper functions. A helper function is essentially a function that comes for help, which means it's not a member of anything. Okay? It's just there to help. So if you overload, if you want to, let me just come back in here and see where we are. What do we have here? Yeah, so we came down to here. I'm just going to take these things off. We don't need that. So let's say instead of, oh. So let's say instead of full name, I want to do this. If I want to print this, I want it to get printed like a regular variable. If I want to do that, how can it work out for me? Now I have to look at what I have in hand and see what are the arguments, operands, the insertion operator requires at this point. This, to, to see what it needs, I'm going to comment it underneath. So. What C out needs as left operand, tell me, what is the C out, well, sorry, so what is the extraction operator's left operand? So the operator I want to overload, so operator to overload is, let's actually do it like this. So operator, To overload is operator insertion, correct? Right? What is the left operand? What is the type, let's put it actually, type of? What is the type of left operand for this one? What is the type of C out? 
O stream, right? So at left operand, you need some kind of O stream. We'll decide what it is. We know the type is now. If it's going to be reference, it's going to be constant, we'll decide. But that's what we are identifying. Now, what is the type of the right operand? What is the type of the right operand? What is full name? STR, right? So the right operand is of type STR. Again, I don't know what type of a thing it's going to be. Is it constant STR reference? I don't care at the moment. <clears throat> what is the return type? What should it return? It has to return O stream. Why? Because we want and L to work with it. So it has to receive C out at left, SDR at right, do its spring thingy, and then return the C out so and L can get printed, cascading. Are we all okay with this? Okay, this as a non member operator overload is overloaded as follows. So I'm going to bring this over here. First of all, it's not a member, so it has to be outside. OK? So it returns. We know it returns uh, O stream. By default, we return any class by reference, unless we can't. Remember, that's the rule. You pass by reference unless you can't. So O stream, I return it by reference. So I'm going to say O stream. I'm in the header file. I cannot just uh, write O stream. I have to write STD because I'm, I cannot write using an header file. So I'm going to say O stream reference operator. Because it doesn't belong to any class, a non-member operator overload receives two arguments for a binary, left and right. So what is the left one? It's an O stream, so STD, O stream, reference OSDR. And what is the right side? It's the SDR. Now, obviously it's reference. No problem with that, OK? So that's that. So uh, I'm going to call it SDR. No. STR, OK? Now, should it be constant or it should remain like that? What do you think? Pardon me? Why? If he said it's supposed to be constant. Can anybody tell why? Why do we need to make that thing constant? Yeah, we just printed it. So we don't need to. I can just not put it. It's like when you leave the house, leave the door open. Don't lock it. You can do that. Well, hopefully the thief's not going to clear your house out. But the sensible thing is that because you're just printing it, you make it constant. That sensible thing should be your obsession. If an object is not about to change, always make it constant, especially when you are passing it by reference. Because passing by reference, literally create a new alias for the object out there. If it's not constant, they can change it. If you pass by value, constant doesn't even make sense. Because it's a copy, who cares if you change it or not? Right? But when you pass it by reference or pointer, you make it constant. We're not going to use pointers for this because it's, it, the type is not pointer. So um, we're going to do it just like this. So this is going to be. Constant SDR. And ladies and gentlemen, remember this. What we are doing right now is blueprint, the blueprint for every single O stream overload you're going to do for any class. That's standard. So if I told you overload, uh, a car to get printed on O stream immediately. To the O stream uh, operator insertion, left one uh, will be an O stream reference. The right one is going to be a constant char 
car reference. Always. You just re replace this with the class you want to print. That's what it is. You understand this, hopefully? OK. So now, how to, how to actually imp implement this? The implementation takes three seconds because we have uh, created because we have created a sensible and nice print over here. Look at our print. The print receives an O stream, returns an O stream. So all I need to do in its implementation is to say return str dot print and pass the OSTR to it. So essentially, it flows through the operator overload and print and goes out. It's like a wave. Okay? Are we okay? Anyway, so, so are you okay with that? Okay, so, so, yeah, so that's what we do. It comes in and goes out. And that's it. That's how it works. By doing this now, full name, and again, you see the print. You see the, these two, these two hand to hand, always the same. If you have a display function, O string pass through it. If you have a show function, O string pass through it. All of them. And this is universal too for all classes. Now, what happens inside print, we don't know. That depends on your business logic. How you're going to format it, what you're going to do with it, we don't know. Okay? But that's what it is. So now if you actually look at the code over here, you'll see that the thing is actually, uh, I'm not getting any, oh, where is it? Let me run it. So if I actually run this program now, you will see that. You see, it actually comes over here. All these things happen. Then full name is passed in here. So SDR becomes the full name. OSDR becomes the C out, passes it to this OSDR. Right? Then from there goes to print. In here it says if M data is not null, no. print the M data. If it is null, print nothing. So essentially it's printed. Job done, right? And you see the cursor is right after it. Then it goes out and returns the O stream that was in back in here. So the result of this will be the reference of the left-hand operator, which is C out. So C out continues by going to end out, and you're going to have the thing coming to new line. Are we good? And this casting, cascading effect will work for anything. So I can actually do this. And you run it, again, it flows through it. Got it? As you see, our class from that ugly functional thingy is changing to, like, just take a look at this. It's like your string is a variable, right? Now we're going to make it better and better. Get ready for this one, because this one is a tough one to go through, OK? So, okay, so, so this one, I'm going to go uh, help. So, for, for reading, it's the exact same thing, like, literally, I, like, look at it. Just all I need to do for reading is this. I'm going to copy it. This becomes iStream. This becomes Extraction operator, and this becomes iStream again, and this removes the constantness because I want to read it. I want to change it. Ta-da, done. Okay? And now just, uh, and then what I do, it's exactly like the other one. I mean, like, like they're so simple. These are things that you, you should beg me to give you in a test. And return sdr.read and pass the OSDR to it. It's the exact same thing. Absolutely no difference. Why? Oh. 
What's going on here? Why is it giving me an error? Did I put that one in a read? Oh, we have a delimiter in the read. So see, I have to fix that. So the delimiter we're going to put in that one will be what? Uh, it's reading from, from the thing, so I'm going to put a backslash n. It doesn't matter. There we go. Right? Because I want them to read an enter, right? So when we are doing from C and I want it to end to a backslash n. If later on I want to do it with something else, I'll do it. But this is what it is. Are we good? All right. So now we can actually read it. So we can actually see in and uh, see in and get the name. So I can actually do something like uh, I'm going to name this um, A dash uh, um, O stream. Uh, overload.cpp. So now for reading, I don't even remember how I uh, implemented the read, but I'm hoping that it's okay. So now we can have something like this. Uh, And then I'm going to go C in, name, right, like a normal variable. And now I'm going to go C out. Something like that. Okay. Now if I run it, seriously, I don't remember how I did the read. I hope it works. Okay, hello, what is your name? Farda. Zolimandu. Hello, good morning, Vardat Zoliman. Right? We good? So you see it's getting better and better. So that's the that's the uh, I stream. So it's gonna be B I stream overload.cpp. For the next one that I want to demonstrate, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Let me think. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Take a look. Where is my shmigli dingi? There you go. So, oh, that's your, not you. Anyways, you name. Okay, uh, your first name. So I'm going to have SDR, last name. Okay, so I'm going to get the name. And in here, whoops, I'm going to go did I see? This is right, right? Yeah. Now I'm going to go C in last name, right? And then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say name plus plus. We did that, right? To add a space after. I think we did that, right? So name will be added, a space will be added to name. Now I'm going to say Now I'm going to say uh, full name will be set to name plus last name. I want to do this. Now this plus is not supposed to have side effect, right? Which means it cannot change the left one, it cannot change the right one. But somehow it has to create a string that has both name and last name in it. So obviously, I need to create a new string, right? And neither of these are going to be returned. Therefore, I cannot return anything in my reference. It's not about this that we return. We can't do that anymore. With this, I have to return something by value. Can I? Let's think about it for a second.
in here, we created an assignment operator, remember? Just to demonstrate what assignment is and how we overload it. And by the way, assignment operator is the only operator that cannot be a helper. You cannot overload assignment operator as a helper. You cannot. It has to be a member. If you do it, it's going to give you an error. You can't do that. All the other ones you can. That's an exception. Just remember. Number two, what, what did we do in the assignment operator? In the assignment operator, we rebuilt the current object based on the object we are assigning to, right? So without knowing, we actually did something just to demonstrate how the things work. We created something interesting to prevent this. So you have two classes. One is A, one is B. Now, in this case, it's not a string. It's dynamic with size. So it could be up. This is A and B are parking, and these are array of cars. It doesn't matter. Or this is an array of integer. These are integer values. That's why we have its size. It's not null terminated anymore. Got it down to this point? Wow, it's right. Got it? Oof. OK. So what happens if I assign one to another? So if I actually assign one to another, this happens. When I say B is equal to A, compiler, because they are both same type, as we did in IPC 144, you set one structure to another, right? It copies all the guts of the A into B, correct? It has no idea that there are resources outside of the class. It has no way to know. So when this copying happens, what's going on? This is what's going to happen. Because the content of M data in A goes to B, now B is going to point to the data of A. And this one's going to be left lost in memory, becomes memory leak. Right? By that assignment operator, unknowingly we prevented this. OK? So now, if I actually continue this, the destructor of A will remove the size, uh, the, the, the data of the A. And then when B's destructor is called, it's going to crash. When your program crashes at the end, usually, that's when you forgot to uh, overload the assignment operator. Because everything looks OK when the program is running, because they both have the same data. And you don't notice when you change A, B is changed too. You don't know it. But anyways, you write, go through it. And then when it reaches to the end, when it wants to call the destructor, it suddenly crashes. And we don't want that. And we fixed that, actually. And what we did was essentially this. What we did was essentially this. We said, OK, the compilers, the system's assignment operator, default assignment, is not good enough for me. So I create my own, which means when assignment happens, I, met, I first remove the data. That's what we did in AlloCopy. AlloCopy deleted the data. So first, I delete the other data so I don't have memory leak. Then after that, I will get the size of the other thing. We did SDRLEN, right? Allocate memory, copy every single thing from the other one to here because the compiler doesn't do it for me. And then after everything is done, I update the size. I don't need to do that with the thing because it's null terminated. But in here, because it's not null terminated, I have to keep track of the size. And when everything is done, I have two separate objects with the same data, but different, that different location. So the first one is gone. It, it removes it, and it's gone. And when the second one is gone, that one is going to get deleted, and life is beautiful with no memory leak. We did that unintentionally. Now, the problem is that, by definition, at any moment in computer, in, uh, in your programming, if an object is passed by value, automatically it gets copied. Let's see why. 
let's say I do something very innocent like this. So forget about this for now. I'm just going to pause it like for now. I'm just going to, I'm going to just make it like this. I'm going to comment it. And in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, print string. And I'm going to say SDRS. And in here, I simply say C out S. Right? Very simple program to write. Are we OK? Now in here, after name, or I'm going to say greetings. And in here, I'm going to say hello S, whatever, right? Are we OK? Now. When, if I do it like this, if I say over here, greetings, and I put over here, name, what's going to happen? We know, I explained to you how a function is called in C. We know when the function is called, it's going to be greetings, SDRS, set to name. That's how it's called, correct? Which means a new S will get created copying the name, right? We said assignment at the moment of creation is what? Initialization. What is initialization in a class? What is being called when it's being initialized? A one argument constructor, right? And what is the argument of that constructor? Another string, right? Another SDR. But do I have a constructor? <clears throat> Oh, do I have a constructor that receives another SDR? No. So compiler will do its best to copy everything like it did its best to copy for assignment, and it screwed everything up. And when I run this program, it seems like everything is good. So when you actually run the program, look, see what happens. I'll, I'm just going to go step by step. So it runs the program. Forget about those. It says, hello. Uh, your first name, and I'm going to say over here, Fardad, and I'm going to hit enter. So Fardad is received. It goes up over here, and S, as we see right now, has Fardad in it. Beautiful. It worked, right? It prints it, and you will see that. Hello, Fardad is there. So we're good. And then what happens? I am at the end of the function, correct? S is a local variable in here. It's going to die. When it dies, what happens? The destructor is called. What is deleted? Far that. Correct? So when it comes out here, what happens to this name? Nothing. It lost its memory. Because S was pointing to its memory, we did not take care of copying. And at the end, when you run it, you get that. Or when you run it, you get this. Crash at the end. How do we fix this? Easy. I'm going to say, OK, I know exactly how to do it. See, now it's a crash. It won't stop. What is this? Where did this come from? Delete scalar. OK. <laughs> it's telling me that you screwed up. Uh, <laughs> all right. So what do I do? I'm going to do accommodate this, which is essentially, essentially create a constructor that receives another string. Obviously, uh, that string, str, is su supposed to be constant because I'm copying it. And I'm going to pass a reference to make sure I'm not going to make a chicken and the egg. What is chicken and the egg? Which one comes first, right? Which one comes first? They both evolve together. That's the answer. But anyway, but, but chicken, if we go chicken and the egg, it's the same thing. If you don't put a reference over there, then through constructions invocation, it has to get copied. So the constructor will call the constructor who's calling the constructor. And it's going to be a whoo -hoo. So we shouldn't do that. And compiler now, old days, it will crash. It would give you stack overflow. But now it's got to just tell you, hey, this is a constructor. Don't do that. All right. But 
Now we're going to do this. So it's two, there are two ways of doing this. Number one, do it manually, which essentially going through the rules. So first of all, m data will be null. Okay, I'll initialize it like that, right? And now answer to your answer to the question that we had for the workshop. The answer to the question that we had for workshop, okay? Uh, in workshop four, you said, right? They say, call the constructor and assign it to the current object. Yeah, what it says is this. Uh, yeah, uh, to copy, sorry. They say, no, actually they say this is even more awful than that. They say, what they say, um, so copy this, then I'm going to say over here, SDR of to copy dot data, something like this. This will actually work. If I do this, it will work perfectly. There is one problem with it. Calling a constructor will not call a constructor. What is it going to do? At line 17, it's going to create a temporary nameless object of type SDR and put the M data in it. Then call the assignment operator copy that into the current object, then at the end that is going to die. You know how expensive that is to create something and then destroy it? Why not just call assignment operator directly? So you, if, and if you want to reuse your constructor, you can. How do you reuse your constructor? You reuse your constructor in here. You can say SDR, now I'm saying initialize it using the other constructor. So that is okay. If I say over here to copy something like that, should I put it at the beginning? Yeah. That is okay. You can do that to invoke another constructor in here, say, when you are initializing me, initialize me like this instead. Okay? That's not calling a constructor. That's telling to reuse the code of one constructor in another. That's OOP 344, 345. Not now. For now, reuse your code if you want to. But if you are reusing, reusing it using The things you have done, like for example, operator equal to copy. It's the same, right? You already wrote the copy thingy. It does it for you. It's the two seconds. Just call the other one. And because you made M that and all, you're good to go. This is not going to fail. It's as if you are setting an empty class to a one that has something in it. It works perfectly. So that's easy way. And the non-easy way for it would be essentially do it from scratch, which, which, which is actually writing like, writing like m data is set to new character ut dot sdr of uh, to uh, copy dot uh, m data data plus one plus one and then go uh, uh, ut dot sdr copy into m data. Uh, the two copies and data. You can do this too. There is no problem, but there's no shame in it. Let's put it that way. Potatoes, potatoes. You want to do it that way? Do it that way or do it this way, right? So that, we call it copy constructor, okay? Now our copy assignment, because I was teaching just operator overloading, is not actually done right. We have to fix our we have to fix our assignment, uh, this assignment. We forgot 
that we forgot that when you write a code, another person uses it, you have to consider either their stupidity or the consequences which, by mistake, they are going to assign an object to itself. What do I mean is, what I mean is this. What I mean is somebody's going to do this. Right? Or unintentionally, they're going to have something like this. They don't know they are the same object. So if this assignment happens, what's going on? When the assignment happens, it wants to assign this one to that one, so it releases the memory of this one, but this is that one. <laughs> OK? So it's going to go bananas. We can prevent this so easily. How? And that's, again, standard. In here, how can I recognize if str is me? How can I do that? If we are both in the same location in memory, correct? If str's location in memory is the same as my location in memory, we are the same. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say over here, if this is not equal to address of str, do the copy. Otherwise, don't do anything. Just return the reference. Which means if you copy something to itself, it's going to remain itself. It's potentially copying itself. Right? No difference. Are we good? So now, this is what we call rule of three. Remember that. Rule of three. Rule of three says, if you have a class, and that class holds data outside of its scope, if it holds data outside of its scope, you must implement copy constructor. That's the one that we created. Copy assignment. That's the assignment when it's assigned to another one. And destructor, rule of three. Any class that holds data outside of its scope requires those three. No questions asked. You have to do it. Otherwise, your program is going to crash somewhere. You create those three, you are home free. Anything you do will work perfectly. Because anything that has happening behind the scene is not going to catch you by surprise. You can return by value, copy, pass by value. Who cares? If it's supposed to be copied, it's going to be copied properly. If it's supposed to be assigned, it's going to be assigned properly. If it's going out of scope, it's going to remove its, its resources, no memory leak. So you're good to go. Now we can continue with our operator overload example. Because now we are safe. Now I can create temporary objects and make copies and stuff like that without screwing everything up. Are we good? OK. By the way, I think this is week six, copy construction and copy assignment stuff. So we covered that. When the time comes, we're just going to review it over and over and over. I'll give more examples so we know it better. But sometimes it just craves to, to say it. So I cannot go by that, by what it says over there. Because it was needed, you just mention it, and then we'll go through it, right? So, so now that I have the safety set up for me and everything looks good and nice, uh, let's do it. Let's actually uh, write the other one. So I'm going to go back. So, this now, if you look at this, uh, I can actually. So it's like ultimate test for uh, rule of three over here. I'm going to go S, uh, uh, name. So I'm going to say full name is equal to name is equal to S. You know, I mean, like, make it the worst thing possible. First, I'm going to make this thing to set to that one. Then I'm going to set that one to some not crazy. Or um, let's, let's just go. We, we know the assignment works. We tested it before. I'm just going to do the uh, unusual one like this. And I'm 
going to say greeting s just to make sure everything works so if I run this program we're going to have everything working properly so I'm going to in here write rule of 3.cpp now let's go back to our business. We were talking about, we were talking about, so forget about these things. We were talking about, I'm going to keep that greeting thingy of mine. I'm going to put it down here. I don't have a last name? No, I forgot the last name. Uh, and I don't need this one anymore. So I'm going to say SDR. So let's go back here. How do we implement this? We have a plus. Left side, I have an object. Do I have access to that object? Can I modify its code? Yes, it's string. So this is going to be a member, no question asked. If you can make it a member, you make it a member, OK? And none of there should change. So let's do it. So so let's separate it from others. So I'm going to say, obviously, it's going to return the SDR reference because we want it to be able to, to uh, return pass to another name, right? But it's not going to be reference, I'm mistaken, because it is a new object that is created inside the operation. Because it's created there, I cannot return its reference because it's about to die. If I create a temporary thing inside the operator to uh, the full name to return, after it's done, it's going to die. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to return a no normal thing without any reference. It's going to be operator plus. Obviously, it's not going to change the right hand side. Okay. Who is the left left operand here? Who is the left operand? Who is the left operand? The current object. So all I need to do to protect the owner is to make the method constant, if I can type it. So this guarantees this plus will not change me, will not change the right operand, and will return a string that is built up of the two. So how do we create it? We have all the tools for it. We don't need to worry about anything. So if I want to put two things together, all I need to do is to create a string. Uh, I'm going to say uh, result. And I'm going to set that one to me. Right? I created the copy constructor. So result, what I want to return out, it's the same, a copy of me. Right? All I need to do is to concatenate the other one, and I did that too. So result plus equal right operand. And I return the result. So what happens over here is this. This plus operator of mine makes a copy of me, a temporary copy of me, adds the right hand side to the copy, returns the copy. The copy is going to get the left thingy, the, the full name, is going to get assigned to the nameless copy that is getting returned. And after that, all extra things are going to die. Are we good? And we run the program.
and it works. Right? Nothing dies. Let's walk through it. So everything dies, but they die properly. Let's put it that way. Okay, so it's going to come over here. Let me just come right to it. I'm just going to click over here and uh, OF5. So uh, Fred, Soleil, and I hit enter. Okay, so now it's actually coming in here. I press F11. It actually comes into plus operator. Result is going to be a copy. Result is going to be a copy of the current one. As you see, the copy constructor is called. It copies friend. It, it allocates memory in the current object. Then it sets uh, that one to Fred. So the result will have Fred into, in it too. Now, please notice that it jumps to return first. It kind of skipped this one. Okay? The reason is, the reason is that Compilers, if it was an old compiler, it wouldn't have done that. It would actually go over here and go over here and then kill the result first at return. Old compilers, if I turn the intelligence to off, result is copied. So that's a local thing, correct? It's added whatever process that it's done. It's about to get returned. When it wants to get returned, because it's returned by value, the result will be copied again into a nameless copy. The nameless copy will get ready to get returned before that result dies. The nameless copy goes to full name. Assignment operator is called. Nameless copy is copied into full name. Right after this statement is over, the nameless will die. So we're going to have two objects dying. What this is doing is optimizing, saying, hey, you are creating a temporary thing in here, uh, a, a local thing over here, and you want me to copy it and it's just about to die? I'm not going to kill it. I'm just going to make that the nameless sentence. So makes it a little bit optimized. If it was a compiler from 10 years ago, you would have two objects created and dying. In here, it's only one. That's why I abandoned those walkthroughs that are confusing like this, because it can have two different results. Right? Depending on what the compiler is. But just understand what happens. So now, as you see, it jumps back up again. So it says, I'm returning. While I'm returning, I'm going to add that thing to it. So now the plus equal operator is called with all the good things it's supposed to do. And now it's returned. Where? Into here. At right side, I have the result, which is nameless now. At left side, I have the full name. So it goes to the assignment operator and copies that nameless thing that is not needed after this operator into the full name. So full name will have that one. And as soon as this statement want to be over, it goes to the destructor and deletes that temporary thing that was returned and then continues its work. If you didn't have the copy constructor, we would have 50 different failures in here. But when you do have it, you don't need to think about it anymore. It's going to go through. Okay? And if, if you go get it, you're going to hear rule of five, too. Rule of five is OP344. 244 four is rule of three. So that's that. So now that's the plus thingy that we have done. But. So this one is going to be D. Uh, what do I call this D thingy? I'm going to call it uh, binary no side effect. Dot CPP. Right? And now let's do something else. I'm just warming up. So <clears throat> you can do something like this. So I have name and I have, why did I delete that? I don't need that. So now 
have str greeting, okay? So I'm going to get the name, and then I'm going to say greeting is set to hello, and then plus name, like that. And I'm going to have cl greeting. I want to be able to do that, right? I want to be able to add something, but if I do that, how am I going to get The result has to be a, be a string, so when you look at this, right? What is the type of left operand? So it's a, it's a C string. What is the type of C string? Constant character pointer, right? So if that's the thing, and it's constant character pointer, then at left side, I have to have a primitive type. Can I make this thing a member of that? No, it's not an object. It cannot have a member. I need help, which means helper functions. So to do that, I have to come over here and say, what do I need? I need to return a string for sure. There is no question about that. And it's going to be created out of thin air, so no reference. It is operator plus, at left side, I'm receiving a constant character pointer C string. And at right side, I'm receiving a constant string pointer string. And then I have to create this. Right? Again, I have all the tools that I want for this. It's two seconds actually writing this. What I'm going to do again is writing str. <sighs> result is, and I can actually put over here C string. So it creates a result out of C string. Then I'm going to say result, result plus equal string, correct? And return result. Right? Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? A professional programmer will never write that. A professional programmer knows what does it mean to call a constructor. When I call a constructor, what happens? A temporary nameless object will get created and die immediately when it's not used, right? I can use it here. So instead of writing these three lines, I'm going to comment it. And I'm going to use my knowledge. I'm going to say return str that is made up of C string plus equal the right str. Done. So it creates a temporary nameless string, attaches that one to it, returns it, and it dies. So essentially, if you write these three lines, compiler will do this for you. That's why it jumps to return first. The reason that when we were doing that, I don't know where it was, it first jumped to return and then went over there is that it was doing this literally. It was saying, well, you are creating something when you can just return it like that. Got it? So it does a thing and now it's perfectly okay to work. So now I can actually go over here and write something like, Hello, Fred Soleil. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this, people? Are we good? All right. Yet another thing. <laughs> what if I am, somebody wants to use a legacy string and copy the whole thing into it? What if somebody wants to say, I have character uh, C string say, I don't know, 91, and what I want to do, I want to copy that greeting to it for some reason. I want to do uh, um, ut.sdr copy into the C string, the greeting. I want to do that. And then, do I have the utils here? I don't have the utils here.
No, uh, C string. Okay. It's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? There is no, nothing that works with, uh, gr I didn't write uh, uh, an SDR copy that copies a greeting. So what do we do? Go write another SDR copy? No. We make our greeting convertible to a constant character pointer. So if the compiler wants to do this, the compiler will try to cast this to the second argument of SDR copy. And the second argument of SDR copy is constant character pointer, right? It tries to cast that to it. So I can provide that. I can overload the casting. How do I overload the casting? I'm going to say, hey, I want an operator that converts this to constant character pointer and doesn't change the object. So where is the return type of the operator? There is no return type. It is the return type itself. This operator is telling what the return type is supposed to be. Therefore, it doesn't have a return type, which means whoever casts me to a constant character pointer, it's going to get the return value of this one. And how do I implement such a complicated thing? Done. So I'm saying if anybody casts me, wants to convert me to a constant character pointer, send my M data out. Let's say somebody wants to know what is my length? If I want to know what is the length of a string, maybe if somebody casts me to size t, I'm going to tell them what is my length. I can write over here operator, size t, const, and say anybody casts me to size t, please return ut.sdrlen. of M data. Obviously, to make sure that I'm doing it right, I'm going to say if M data exists, do the SDR and otherwise just return zero. Right? If it's null, the length is zero, we assume. Right? So now, I can write over here C out string, I'm going to say with, with length of size t greeting. <clears throat> In here, it's a hidden cast. I don't see it. Compiler is going to do it for me because the signature of my SDR copy says constant character pointer and put in the greeting. So compiler says, okay, they want me to add the constant character. Let me see if I can convert it. We provided that. In here, I'm manually telling, hey, convert this to a size T. So essentially, I'm telling, give me the size of greeting. And that's what's going to happen. So now if I run the program, this is what's going to happen. So it's going to say, hello, Fardat Salimandu. And then when this is going to get called, because greeting has to be a constant character pointer, it goes to the conversion over there and returns the constant character pointer. The constant character pointer is returned. Obviously, copying will happen, and C string will have that one. Then I'm going to say, print the size of it. It goes to the size, gets the SDR length, because that's not null, comes out, and the output is going to be me Hello, Fardot, with length of 24, which means this is 24 characters long. Are we good? And finally, and this is not all afterwards, but we'll talk about more things with, uh, in future, but, but <clears throat> what if somebody wants to say, I want to say uh, for C 
size t, i set to zero, no, i set to, i set to, i set to greeting, okay, and i greater than or equal to zero. So, wait a minute, it has to be greeting minus one, right? Because uh, that one is null. So, I'm going to say greeting minus one. And i minus minus, I want to print it backwards. So I'm going to say C out greeting I. Actually, I'm not going to do that, so I'm making a mistake. As you see, it's not actually giving me an error. Can anybody tell me why it's not giving me an error? I mean, what the heck is an index beside a class's name? This is a class. What the heck is it? What is the meaning of that? It doesn't have a meaning. The compiler is confused. It says, well, wait a minute. You are giving me an index. Index is supposed to be at the side of a pointer, right? So if I convert this to a pointer, I'm going to have an array, right? Can it convert it to a pointer? Yes, constant character pointer. So it will work. But the problem is that it's not smart. If it's the size is incorrect, it's going to crash. So I'm going to overload that to make it a smart array. So if they exceed the size, it's not going to crash. So what do I do? I'm going to overload the index operator. I'm going to say, OK, if you want to contact, get the data in me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to return you a character reference so we can even change my elements if you want to. And then I'm going to put an operator, <coughs> operator index. And in here, I'm going to say, give me a size t index. And I'm not going to make it const because maybe you want to change the elements, like an array. So how to do this? That index is the index that is coming in. All I need to do is to say return mdata, and I'm going to put index mod size t of this. So what happens over here? Let's say the length is 10. If they put 2 over here, 2 mod 10 is 2, right? 3 mod 10 is 3. 9 mod 10 is 9. 10 mod 10, 10, mod 10 is 0, goes back in. 11 mod 10 is 1. So no matter what they put in index, it always stays within the limit of my array. It will never go. So if they do something stupid by actually writing something like this, greeting plus five, so I am going, so it's going to be a little crazy. I'm going to print it out and you'll see what happens. So when I run this program now, and I'm going to go right down to here. Okay, and the length is 16, by the way. So when it starts, i is 21. There is no 21. But if you go to the end, it becomes 16, then 17 becomes the first one, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. So it goes back in. So the first one that's going to get printed, it's going to go back in. It goes in here. So it finds out what is this value. And it's going to return it out. It comes back out, prints it, and as you see, it's halfway through. Oh, it's it's the space between Fred and Sonny. Sorry. Okay. And and let's continue and see how it's going to go. So it's going backwards. Remember that. So it goes like this. You see.
Come on, you can do it. I want to go to the end. Seriously? Oh, I did it. Yeah, it's just Fred Soleil. So it's not 16. It's even more. There he goes. Oh, come on. Am I doing it right? Holy mother, what is the size here? Wait, I did something wrong. You know what? Amazing example. That's what I like, when something goes wrong. This greeting, it says size D, greeting plus five. It wants to cast it to what? We think it is casting it to size D, right? But I think the address is better. So it actually got constant character pointer plus five. So now you have a ginormous number. So it's, we better actually cast it. So all the things that you are doing, remember, to make sure that you're having the right thing coming in, actually cast it so you don't get something stupid like that. OK? So it would, the number was huge. OK, let's stop it and, and, and try, uh, try it again. <laughs> that was interesting. So now I'm going to run it again. This time I is going to be, oh, first name. OK, so it is going to be 21. This is good. And now let's go. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> uh, how far did we go? Four. Actually, why am I not just going right there? Let's run to cursor. There we go. Run to cursor. Run to cursor. I say run to cursor. This is the cursor. Please run to cursor. Run to cursor. <laughs> OK. Uh, <gasps> something is happening. What am I doing wrong in here? Ah, oh, can anybody tell me what I did wrong? Actually, it wasn't compiler. Compiler didn't do that. Compiler didn't. It actually was size T. That was right. Compiler was actually doing the right thing. I was stupid. Can anybody tell me why? Oh my god, this is a good one. I love it. Be quick. Oh my god, we have a class come. The next class is waiting. I'm going to leave it with an error. You find out what it is. I know exactly what it is. It was a very nice mistake. Find out what it is and let me know. Okay? So I'm going to leave it with a mistake. This code is wrong. Remember, you have to fix it. Have a beautiful day, everyone. I'm going to put a prize for it, too. <laughs> <laughs>